Hello and welcome to Talking Grannies. It's Emma here, one of the Yarndale team, and um, this time I'm going to be talking all things granny. Um, as we're about to launch a series of granny squares, a week of granny squares. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Look, I'm, I'm always crocheting granny squares. I've always got some on the go. Um, I've got five blankets on the go at the moment in various different stages that all need finishing off. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Right, I'm going to put this down and I'm going to start at the beginning. My granny was always busy. She, oh, her hands were always busy whenever she was sat. She was tatting, which is a sort of lace making. She was crocheting, she was winding back wool, or she was knitting, or she was mending. She was always busy. And my granny square adventure started when I was quite little. I don't know how old, but my granny taught me to crochet. And I made the odd little thing, not very successfully, because I wasn't very invested in it. Um, it seemed a bit fiddly to me when I was little. When my first daughter was born, Ella, I made a little blanket. And then I didn't do any crocheting for a long time until about 10 years ago. And since then, I've gone on to make more than 40 blankets, various items of clothing, cushions, all sorts of things, toys, bags, you name it, I have made it in crochet. Um, so I thought it would be helpful to talk through some of the things that I use, so that if you've never made a granny square before, you've never crocheted and you'd like to learn, you can join in, but you'll need to get some things ready before so that you've got everything that you need. So I thought I would just show you what things I use when I'm crocheting my granny squares. I mostly use double knit wool, DK. Um, you can use small amounts if you want lots of different colours or you can use use bigger amounts. OK, but you don't need to go out and buy a lot of wool to make a granny square. That's, that's the beauty of it. It uses very small amounts of wool. This blanket here is where it all started. And this blanket was actually made by, by my granny. And in true 1960s, 1970s style, all this wool has been reused. So it, it was jumpers, two ply jumpers that were bought from jumble sales and the wool was wound back into balls and then was crocheted. And if you see where you've got um, the two two different colours together. It was two strands of, of two ply together and it's really heavy, it's really dense. So you really can use all sorts to crochet. But this was this blanket has been in my life always. It went on picnics, my brother took it to cub camp, my children had picnics on it and my niece has picnics on it now. So it's a real family heirloom and it's still going strong. So if you if you start crocheting blankets they will be your family heirlooms to pass on. So I use double knit wool and I usually use a four millimetre hook. Now I'm quite a loose crocheter so if I'm using a four millimetre hook I get quite a, a squishy soft square. If I want it to be a little bit tighter and a little bit stronger so if I was making a bag I might use a three and a half millimetre hook. Um, so Got different four millimeter hooks here. My favorite are these with the with the chunky chunky handles, the tulip ones, but you can use any. I learned to crochet with a metal hook like this, and these are the cheapest to buy. Um, but you might find the ones with the, with the handles, the colored handles, plastic handles more comfortable, or you might find a wooden one more comfortable to use. Have a try and see. Okay, you can pick them up in charity shops and then you can just have a go. Um, so I mostly use a four millimeter hook. For my granny squares. Um, what else do I need? What else have I got here? I've got a darning needle. You need a darning needle to sew in your ends and as part of our granny square journey I'll show you different ways of dealing with your ends. Um, everybody has their own their own personal way of, of, of dealing with ends. Um, some people hate darning in all those ends. Some people just like to tuck them under but I'll, I'll explain all that um, in, in the first granny square that we do. Um, you need scissors to snip off your wool and it's a really, really good idea to have a notebook and a pencil. And this is something that I'm only really just getting to grips with and just remembering to write down what I do, what size hook, what wool. So that if you put a project down and you don't go to it for a while, you can come back to it 
and you know exactly what, what, what size hook you were using, what the wool was, in case you need to buy any more wool. So that's a really, really good tip. Um, we're going to have a week of grannies. So we'll start with a classic granny square and then we will move on to, to different, different styles of grannies. If you've never crocheted before, I would recommend looking at the video of how to, how to crochet a chain. Um, which is after this, after this video and it's a really good idea just to have a go at holding a yarn, getting your tension and, and feeling what it feels like to hold the hook. Um, so I'll take you through that and that's a good first step. Um, if you've crocheted before and you're just here for the journey and you'd like to join in then you're very very welcome and I look forward to spending time with you and showing you my way of crocheting granny squares and it's not the only way, there are lots of different ways and everybody has their own way of, of making it work for them. There are different ways of holding yarn, different ways of holding the hooks, and it really is a personal preference. It's as individual as handwriting, and everybody's handwriting is different, so everybody's style of creating and making is slightly different, and that's the beauty of handmade. It's not going to be exactly the same as somebody else's. So, if you'd like to join our series of granny squares, you'll need to get yourselves a four millimetre hook, some scissors, a darning needle, a notebook and a pencil, and some little bits of double knit wool. And I look forward to spending time with you and sharing some of what I've learned over the years of making granny squares. See you soon.